Okay, guys, I was wrong, and I'm really happy that I was wrong in my assumption that these were going to be two individual characters. We have the new Light Bearer hero. Not heroes, just hero, one of them. Adrian and Elise. It's like the twins. We got two in one. Honestly, the design is wicked. I really like the look of this character. Um, or these two in one. Dude, I, I never know how to phrase it. But... I think the design is wicked, uh, and I'm glad it's only one character. Now, the the TLDR of my thoughts on this one is that signature item 40 on this character, pretty cracked. Uh, 60 engraving, 9 furniture, not so necessary. Um, but this was always my fear when they introduced the 40 signature item. It now means that new characters that get introduced are going to feel kind of incomplete without their 40 signature item. Uh, and... Whereas if they never introduced 40 signature item, they would have had that whole kit anyway in just their 30. So I don't know. Let's go through it. We'll talk about it. But I do think there is some de definitely this kit does have a fair bit in it. So let's buckle up, try and read it together because uh, there's some sketchiness in these descriptions for me when I read through it, but you guys know I suck at reading. So, passive. During battle, Adrian and Elise dance continuously across the battlefield, moving towards the enemy nearest the edge of the allied battlefield and prior prioritizing targeting enemy heroes. Upon moving close to a target, so not just the target, upon moving close to anyone, so if they're mo moving towards one enemy, this is the way I saw it happening, they're moving towards the furthest enemy and they, there was an, there's another enemy along the way, they will stop and hit them. Um, upon moving close to a target, Adrian twirls Elise to attack, dealing damage equal to 200% of attack rating and knocking the target back to the edge of the enemy battlefield. If the target is knocked back successfully, they will also be stunned for three seconds. While Adrian and Elise are moving forward, they will use a normal attack every five seconds, dealing damage equal to 150% of their attack rating to nearby enemies. That's a separate attack from the passive one when they're going to hit enemies. Actively, when they use actively, facing the enemy battlefield. Now, from what I can see, it's basically any enemy on, like, enemy side of them gets hit. I think if they're behind, they don't. Don't quote me on that. But facing the enemy battlefield, Adrian lifts Elise up to attack uh, in an elegant arc, dealing damage equal to 300% of attack rating to all enemies and knocking them back to the edge of the enemy battlefield. If a target is knocked back successfully, they will also be stunned for three seconds. So we've got the passive when we're hitting them and knocking them back, they get stunned. We've got the ult that's going to stun them. Then we've got a little bit more to go on. Uh, this is just a damage increase for level 2, but level 3 skill increase. When a target is knocked back successfully, the duration of the stun increases based on the distance the target has been knocked back, up to a maximum of 3 seconds. So if they're right on the ally side of the battlefield, you can get up to a 6 second stun out of this. So not too bad. Alright, moving on to the next ability. This is a nice short one. When Adrian twirls Elise to attack, the nearest allied hero gains a shield worth 200% of Adrian and Elise's attack rating for 4 seconds. When the shield expires, 150% of its remaining value is converted into health for its owner. Uh, then it goes, it gets an increased value. And then at the final skill up, upon performing a twirling attack, they gain the shield as well as the allied hero. So basically just some protection for allied heroes is essentially what this is. All right, next one, passive. For enemies that are immune to control effects or cannot be knocked back, twirling attacks and lift attacks will wound them instead, causing the enemy to lose health equal to 150% of their attack rating uh, every second for five seconds. This is a pretty decent multiplier. Now, don't fear, it does apply to all enemies at level three skill up, but level two skill up... Wounded enemies suffered increased uh, health loss per second, equal to 260% of their attack rating. So we get a decent multiplier increase on that. Uh, and, and like, it's it's decent. Uh, and then the enemy is wounded whether they are knocked back or not. So this gives them a ton of extra multiplier on any damage they essentially deal. We're getting an extra 260% times five because it's per second for five seconds it ends up being a really, really decent multiplier on everything that they do. So this one's not too bad. And then we got the 30 engraving. Upon successfully knocking an enemy back to the edge of the enemy battlefield, Adrian and Elise uh, haste increased by 15% and their movement speed increased by 15% for six seconds and can be stacked up to three times. Because when we look at especially their furniture, their three furniture, which is going to give them energy, they're going to be moving fast, have a lot of haste, and they shouldn't really let this drop off. So that's pretty solid buff as well because movement 
movement speed is very important because it means the quicker they'll get around to hitting another enemy and knocking them back and snowballing the whole thing. All right, next one, passive. Warning. I've read this one like six times. I still don't entirely get how it works. Essentially, it's you get cheat death with a heal, but the heal functionality makes no sense to me in the wording. I apologize for that, but let's go through it. Upon taking fatal damage, they avoid death for that time, and the spirit contained in Elise's dancing marionette mir 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 will heal Adrian and Elise five seconds. I think it's supposed to be four or five seconds. During this time, the spirit's remaining drive will be converted into health up to 90% of max health. After the duration, they regain their health and continue battling. Every time Adrian and Elise suffer 2% of damage or health loss while being healed, the healing duration will be reduced by 0.1 seconds. This effect can be used up to two times per battle. What I think that's saying is it basically makes them immune to death and starts a timer. And then at the end of that timer, they get healed for how long the timer was, but they can still take, quote unquote, take damage during that invincibility phase while the timer is going. And the more damage they take, the shorter the timer is. That's the way I think it's meant to be, be, be worded. Uh, that's what it's saying. But I could be a little bit wrong on that. So the more damage they keep taking, the shorter their immunity to death is. Uh, and it, you get it two times per battle. Uh, okay, so skill ups. Uh, it, every time they receive health loss of... 4%, it goes up from 2% so they can take more damage before it gets reduced. Uh, during healing, enemies in the back line of the enemy battlefield will be unable to inflict damage or health loss to them, which means they, it means they take a lot less damage from this, which is nice. And then 60 engraving, it can they can get it three times per battle. Honestly, the three times is nice, but it doesn't feel necessary in my opinion. Now let's jump on to the signature items. So this one's pretty big. Uh, if I'm reading it correctly, Adrian and Elise deal 20% more damage to enemies in the back line. Uh, after dealing damage to enemies in the back line of the enemy battlefield, Adrian and Elise erosion is increased by 40% for, uh, by, sorry, by 40 for three seconds. Then it goes to increase. They deal 60% more damage to enemies in the back line of the enemy battlefield. Uh, then at 30, this effect apl also applies to allied heroes in the back line of the enemy battlefield. So, it means all lunging allies deal 60% extra damage to the backline. Um, and then I'm pretty sure on top of that, uh, they gain, after dealing damage to those enemies, they gain, I'm pretty sure they get all these effects. Basically, lunging allies get these effects. But this is why I said 40 is very important, because that's very niche using lunging allies. Whereas at 40, this effect applies to all allied heroes. So all allied heroes, if they're hitting back row enemies, they're just getting like the massive increases or they like they get the increased damage. You're going to like slap back rows with these, especially the like, big AOEs. I just going to slap back rows. So that's where I said it kind of feels necessary, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. It, it feels like it feels like the true potential of this character is unlocked from that 40 signature item for the support that it gives to the team. All right, moving on. Furniture is quite an easy one. During battle, they gain 50 energy every one second. That is a good effect. Three furniture, definitely great. Then nine furniture gives them 50 points of tenacity. The tenacity is nice. I don't think it's going to be mandatory, but I could be wrong. We could have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, I, I think the main functionality comes out of this three. It depends on how your survivability goes and stuff like that, whether you need the nine. So, uh, honestly, I, I like the three. So, like, I feel like the optimal build for this character is going to be, like... Uh, Three furniture, 30 engraving, and 40 signature item. That's kind of what I'm seeing or what I'm anticipating. Uh, and they are an agility-based warrior, which I forgot to mention. All right, let's go check them out. Let's go check them out. All right, let's do the, the basic stuff. Let's put it... Okay, one time speed. Wee, They go boom. Got that shield. Boom. Boom. Refresh that shield. Boom. And there we go. You guys get the gist. Now, let's look at it on four times speed, so how quick they move around. And so with this, I think grouping... I, I know grouping is a thing with every character, but I kind of feel like five pull with this is going to work decent because they try and get the enemy closest to your side of the battlefield, and if they're all there, they'll just continuously kick, 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 get that energy alt, and then it's like you just like, like pull them all in, and then you just knock the ball back and stun them, and... 
I, I, I feel like I, I kind of want, I really do want to test five pool with these guys, but there you go. That's that. All right, let's jump into this. Uh, so, oh, we do have an ear on. I didn't even notice we had an ear on. You know, I'm curious. Let's put ear on in here. And let's see what happens. Oh, he doesn't get the, wait, I, I need to have another tank in there. Okay, so the way that health thing's represented, it kind of looks like it starts at 90%. So it looks like it has that ha hazy bar. And it's like, okay, 90%, this is how much you're going to get healed. But as the time reduces, the amount healed goes down and you can see that bar going down. Uh, what I want to do here is let's do this. Uh, is there anything that will deal zero damage so we don't have to like, ah, uh, damn. Let's just do this. I, I just want to see the fire, the, not the fire pull, but the Euron pull them. And then they just go punt, 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 punt. And then we just go doof. Because like when the enemies are grouped, it means they don't have to move far before they do the next kick. And then they keep shielding and stuff. But uh, I, I don't know on the damage. Wait, let's back out a sec. Let's go to the arena of trials. Let's go back here. All right, let's slap like just you in. Let's see. So we get that shield, happy days. They're knocked back. Look at that. Stun everyone, happy days. I mean, I, 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 think, I think they're decent. I do like the control. I like the supportive aspect. But it's the kind of character I'm not willing to invest 40 signature item into them this early. So I'll get back to you guys, let you know thoughts as we go along. But, but I think they look pretty good for a full faction. But... That's just my take. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.